this is the pattern for the pussy hat project the hashtag is hashtag pussy hat and it's the pussy hat project.com it's in anticipation and com commemoration of the women's march on washington dc and that's going to happen on january 21st 2017 where we're encouraging women to wear pink hats with these cute little ears so that we can have a sea of pink in the march see how all the women are drawn back here with their hats on so we have to let knit lots of these hats for everybody to have one for this project you will need a skein of yarn in a size 4 weight knitting needles 10 inch length in a u.s size 7 or 4.5 millimeter a tape measure i like the flexible kind a pair of scissors and a darning needle to begin you'll need about two yards of extra yarn and this is going to be for our long tail cast on and at about the two yard spot we'll get started you're going to drape your yarn across your finger and your thumb hold the yarn down here by your pinky finger take your knitting needle press down on the top come down here and wrap that knitting needle around the yarn on your thumb and then up across the yarn by your finger and then bring your thumb up and you'll see a little triangle get formed and then bring the tip down so that the yarn just pops up through that triangle then let everything go with your thumb and you'll have your first stitch on now you want to hold your finger over your stitch grab your finger by grab the yarn by your thumb up by your index finger and bring it right up through that loop okay down here by your thumb up here by your index finger and right through the loop and we're going to do this 50 times so that we have 50 stitches cast on okay once you have all your stitches on your needle it'll look something like this what you want to do is just go ahead and roll this up and kind of get it out of your way so you don't accidentally knit with this i'm just going to roll it over my thumb and forefinger and then create kind of a little bit of a knot with it so that i don't accidentally use this anywhere because you don't want to knit with this part so kind of however you get that out of your way is good all right now we're going to go ahead and start knitting the first step is to take your knitting needle and you'll notice that your loop has a front and a back on it and this needle in your right hand is going to go right under that front loop and behind the needle in your left hand and then you'll take the yarn that goes from your from your source and we're going to go up behind the needle and then this, I'm going to slide that tip and catch the yarn and then take that original stitch right off the needle. He jumps right off and give it a little bit of tightening. Okay, then we'll do it again. And in this pattern, we're going to knit three. So we'll just do two and then one more. We're going to knit, slide it right in around the top and over now that gives us three knitted stitches now we're going to need to knit two purl stitches and knitting is really made up of these two stitches if you get to know these two stitches you're a knitter so this is great now to do this one the yarn needs to come to the front of your knitting and this time that right knitting needle is going to slide under that front loop that you have and the yarn is going to go over the needle and then you're going to pull your needle tip through so that you catch this back here in the back kind of the same way as you did your knitting just the opposite we'll do one more of those because you have two purl stitches so that's going to come right down under there like that 
And I do give a little pull on the yarn so that it makes it so that the yarn can work, can work through that loop well. All right, then we're gonna go back to knitting. So the yarn needs to go back to the back of the work and your needle will go into the front and we'll knit two. Then the yarn comes back to the front and we're going to purl two stitches, one, purl two. And what this is doing is it's forming a rib stitch. Now you can see I sort of just push those stitches back up because it makes it easier if they're right in line to go next for your knitting. And don't worry, you can, you can loosen your hands. You don't have to hold real, real tight. Nothing's gonna fall off as you're going. All right, yarn to the back. And we're going to knit two. One. Two. Yarn comes back to the front. Purl two. Now I want you to look at your work because we're going to look for some clues of whether we've done knitting or purling. And you can see here, have you look real close. There are two little bumps right here and then no bumps and then two bumps and no bumps and two bumps. The bumps are the purl stitch and the no bumps are the knit stitch. So if you're ever confused about, oh geez, where did I just do? You can come back and look. Two bumps is purl, knit, purl, knit, and then you can figure out what's next. So we have two purl stitches, we're back to knitting. And then when your knitting gets a little further along, you'll see this very obviously. Okay, we're gonna knit. Now we'll go back to purl. And you'll do this for the rest of your row. And at the very, very end, I think we're gonna end with three purl stitches. All right, now we're at those last three stitches and we're going to purl three. Okay, now you have all your work finished and now it's all moved to the right needle. Now the trick is you just need to turn your work over And now it's all starting all over again. And you're gonna do the same thing. And you're gonna look for those little clues. These are knit stitches. These are my purl stitches. Now that you've got that set up row, you can just cruise right along. And we're, gonna, we're going to work this for four and a quarter inches. So that's pretty, pretty long. If we get our tape measure out, four and a quarter inches is right up to here. So that's how much of a brim we're going to be creating. So let's go ahead and get knitting. This is what your knitting would look like when you finished about four and a quarter inches. So what I'll do is I'll measure from the top here right down to four and a quarter. And that tells me that I'm ready to move on to the next step. Stockinette stitch is what we have right here where we have knits on one side and then the other side are all of the purl stitches. To get from the cuff to this part, we're just going to knit on the right side and purl on the wrong side. So we'll get started just knitting all the way across. Now we'll flip it over. And now I have all the purl bumps on one side and I'll just purl all the way across. And I'll keep doing this, knitting and purling all the way until I have those 13 inches.
you know you've completed your stockinette stitch when your piece measures 13 inches from the needles. Once your piece measures 13 inches, you'll begin doing your knit two, purl two again. So we're going to knit three, and then go right into that purl stitch. And purl two, then knit two. And you'll do this until your second ribbing is equal to that first ribbing, which was four and a quarter inches. I just finished up the rib stitch for the second side of my hat, and I am going to use my measuring tape to measure to make sure that I'm at the same point that I was last time. I can also count each of my stitches to see if I have the same amount of rows. Each stitch is represented by this V. So I pick a row of my knitting and then I start counting from my ribbing all the way up to the needle. And I know that my two sides are the same size. So now I'm ready for the cast off. For this project, we want a, a stretchy cast off because the hat has to be able to stretch and we've got a good ribbing right here. We have a variety of stitches, our knit stitches and our purl stitches, and we want to do a cast off that leaves everything stretchy. So the first thing is to just knit a stitch as you would regularly. And then you're going to do a yarn over and knit another stitch. The yarn over simply puts another bit of yarn on your needle. So I'm going to back that up just a little bit so that we can see that again. A yarn over is simply putting the yarn right over the needle and then your knit stitch as regular and that leaves you that extra wrap that's right over your needle. Now what we're going to do is pick up the wrap and that first stitch and we are going to slip, you're basically slipping this last stitch through these two stitches. So we'll come pick those up and slide that right through. Now we have another knit stitch here. So we'll wrap that around, do our knit stitch, then pick up the wrap and the stitch and bring that right through. And I didn't get the whole piece of yarn, so let's, let's go back and do that again. So if you do have to take it out, you can see I didn't lose my stitch or anything. Everything's all right. So let's do that one more time. Wrap around the needle, our knit stitch as regular. I'm going to pick up the wrap and the stitch together. And bring the stitch up through. Now we've reached our purl stitch. The next thing we want to do is wrap our yarn. Now we need to wrap it so that the yarn is coming towards the front. So just bring the yarn to the front and wrap it once around the needle. And then go ahead and purl. And then we'll pick up those two stitches the same as we did last time. And slide that stitch right up through there. Then we have one more purl, so we'll wrap around the needle and purl, giving us that extra stitch on there. And bring that right through. Then we'll move the yarn to the back, wrap it around the needle, do a knit, and pull that through. I'm going to do that one more time and you'll just keep going until you've cast off all your stitches. I 
the end, we're just going to keep doing that bind off all the way to that last stitch. So you'll still do your yarn over and get to your last stitch. Pull those over for your cast off and then there you have it. Now what we want to do is make sure that we leave lots of extra tail yarn for the seaming. So when you get ready to finish here, make sure that you give yourself at least two yards of extra yarn. That way you won't run out in the end. And we'll go ahead and cut that. And your last stitch, you're just going to take that yarn and pull it right through. And you have a cast off and it's really pretty. See how pretty that is? All right, now the wrong side of our fabric is this purl side. And the right side of our fabric is the knit side. So we're going to put the two right sides together and see how we were smart and left ourselves plenty of yarn to do our seaming. Now what we want to do is match up that final side, those two sides, because we'll seam these sides and once you put the hat on, those cat ears will naturally form. So let's get started on our seaming. Now that we've got all this extra yarn, let's do a little scientific experiment here. We're going to give ourselves four times the length of this hat and that should be plenty to do our seaming. This way we don't have too, too much extra and then we can just push that to the side. All right, now here's where you want to get out your darning needle. And here's a little trick for threading your darning needle. I like to just wrap the yarn over the needle and give it a little pinch. Slide the needle through and then you can put it easily through the eye of that needle. All right, now what we're going to do, I'm going to turn it this way. We want to Look for these stitches where these stitches match up and we are going to sew them together. So you're just going to go in through one stitch, in through the next stitch and pull that along. I'm going to watch these two sides just to make sure that they're lining up okay. Watch our ribbing there. When you get to the very tippy top like this, you just want to put your needle in another time. Then you will have your little loop here. Put your needle up through the loop. Pull your yarn. That'll form another loop and then just put your needle through one more time and that will create a nice little knot. And then you can weave in your ends. Weaving in your ends just means that you stitch a few stitches down to make sure that that end of the yarn is tacked into the seam so that it's not just flopping around. And eventually it'll just kind of felt into the hat. So we'll do that a couple of times and then we can just go ahead and cut that tail right off. Just like that. And there you go. You have that all ready to go. You just have to do the same for the other side. Once you have those sides seamed up, you're ready to turn your hat inside out. 
and those little ears are going to come out automatically. And when you put it on, they're just going to be right there. Great easy hat. Make a ton of them.